So today's lesson is on taking the derivative of other exponential functions. So what if the base is not e, right? So yesterday we did, you know, what's the derivative when the function is e to the power of x? e is a really important base because it has that really helpful property that it's, it is its own derivative. Um, when you are looking at a different base, you need to use a um, you know, like a, a sort of like a correction measure. So uh, basically the derivative of any exponential is itself, but then also multiplied by a correction factor that kind of, um, you know, brings it back in order. Now, uh, let's try, uh, you know, an, looking at an example. So let's graph two to, two to the power of x. Now you can you can see from looking at this that its derivative must also be an exponential, right? It has a very low positive slope here, and then it gets more and more and more positive, and then it gets more and more and more positive as the function rises quicker and quicker. So the derivative is going to be another exponential, and that exponential is related to 2 to the x, but it also has an extra factor on there, which we're going to just quickly explore right now. So uh, let's graph the, the equation. So here we get 1 half. Here we get 1. Here we get 2. And here we get 4, right? So you have these points. So, you know, negative uh, 1, f negative 1, 0, f 0, 1, f 1, and 2, f 2. Okay, and they're the, they're the four points that we kind of looked at on the other page, right? So just zoom in so we can see them a bit better. Okay, now, the derivative at each one of these places would be the slope of the tangent, right? So let's get slope of the tangent of point A function f. Okay, so that first slope there you can see is 0 0.35. And you know what, just to make this a little more accurate, let's go ahead and keep another decimal. So 0 0.347. Okay. Uh, and we'll just... Okay, now at 1. Okay, so again, we're going to do the same thing. I just typed slope of the tangent, except this time instead of point A, I want point B. It has a slope of 0 0.693. Now I want the same thing, but I want a tangent at C. So 1.386. And finally, we want the same thing, but at point D. And 2.773. OK. Now this uh, you know, it looks like nothing, really. Uh, doesn't seem like there's any kind of pattern here. But there, there is a pattern here that um, we're just going to look at right now. And it comes from the ratio between the original value and the new value. Okay. So what I'm, what I'm arguing is if you take the original value and multiply it by a specific constant, you're going to get the derivative value. Okay, and that constant is what we call the correction that you do to 2 to the x in order to create its derivative. So let's do this by doing the a value. Sorry, does it want, yeah, it wants the derivative on top. So my number a divided by the y value of my point a, which was 0 0.5. When I do that, I get this number 0 0.693, which is kind of interesting because we have already seen that number, right? So 0 0.693 is the ratio in between the two values. Now, of course, the second one is also going to have a value of 693 because you're taking 0 0.693 and dividing it by 1. Right? So really nothing to uh, that. I mean, th that one we can just look at and, and see. Uh, I'm just going to drop the size of this a bit so it fits. Okay. Now the next one, I take the my value C and I divide it by the y-coordinate of my point c, which is basically f of, f of 3. Again, it gives me 0 
Okay, and of course the last one you can expect. I take my d value, I divide it by the y value of point d, and I get the same thing. So what we're seeing here is that the derivative, okay, of the original function is like it's the same as the original function just multiplied by a constant and in this case that constant is 0 0.693 now imagine I take the original graph 2 to the x and multiply it by that constant okay so I get 2 to the x times 0 0.693 now what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph all of my points but with their derivative values instead of the actual value so the x coordinate of point B but the derivative value at B, the x-coordinate of point C, but the derivative, and then the x-coordinate at point D, and its derivative. And if you notice, we'll just hide these slopes here, those, those points fit perfectly on this blue graph. The blue graph, remember, is 2 to the x times this correction value, and this graph is the derivative. Watch when I graph the derivative of 2 to the x. It, this is what it gives me. Right, this the, just drew it in purple. Okay, so the derivative of any exponential is itself times a correction. Now the question is, what is the correction, and how do you get it? How did I get 0 0.693 here? How would I do that in a different question? Okay, uh, draw the tangent line at x equals zero. What is the slope of the tangent at x equals zero? The slope is 0 0.693, and that is the correction factor. So that so f prime of zero is the correction factor okay so that's an important thing to realize so f prime of 0 equals the correction factor now uh, I just want to quickly look yeah all right all right so let's 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 leave it at that for now we'll we'll, we'll figure out the correction factor of course a faster way of doing it but for the time being let's just say this so in order to create an exponential derivative you're simply going to copy the function out and then you're going to multiply it by a constant that is a correction factor so f prime for us is equal to 0 0.693 oh, sorry let's write it like this 693 times 2 to the x okay now this number uh, where does it come from right how do we get it so f and f prime are both exponential. f prime might be a vertical stretch or it might be a vertical compression depending on the value of b. So once again, in my case, it's a vertical uh, compression, right? Because I'm multiplying it by 0 0.693. But let's say I drew 3 to the x and then took its derivative. Uh, now the derivative is actually above the original, right? It's a vertical stretch. So sometimes it's a stretch, sometimes it's a compression, but it, we always know it's being multiplied by a constant. Okay, We know that the stretch factor, or the constant factor, is equal to the slope of the tangent at zero. Okay, Really, really important idea. Okay, So the derivative of the exponential function, uh, where does it come from? So you take the limit as h approaches 0 of f prime x plus h minus f of x over h, right? Same thing we always do. Now we're going to sub in the exponential function b of x. So instead of f prime x plus h, I put b to the power of x plus h. Then I subtract b to the power of x. Now when you have these two things side by side, you can factor them, right? Right? Because if you think about b to the x plus h as a multiplication, b to the x times b to the h, then you end up with this expression here, and you can factor b to the x to the front. Now remember, the point of doing this was to be able to uh, look for a way to uh, sub in 0. Now we can't really sub in 0 here because you have h on the bottom, but you can take this b to the x and bring it to the front, because it's, it doesn't have an h anymore, right? So the limit times a constant is the same thing as a constant times a limit. And now you get this special definition right here. b to the h subtract 1 divided by h as h approaches 0, right? What is that? Now this is kind of a really interesting thing. Um, the limit as h approaches 0 of b to the h minus 1 
over h. Let's try this with a bunch of different numbers and just see what what we get. Okay, so let's just let's say um, let's try it with the numbers two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go limit the function I'm interested in is uh, a to the power of x minus one. Okay and I'm going to divide by x. So basically I'm, I'm just putting x instead of h here, right? And I want to know the limit as, as it approaches 0. Okay, now of course we already knew the answer to that one. Sorry, I do not know why it animates like that on me. We knew the answer to that one was 0 0.6931. We already did that one, right? So the, let's just rename this one to limit when it was a 2. Okay, now let's try the same thing. Okay, let's do the limit this time. So lim three is the same thing except with b instead of uh, instead of a, and we get that number. So there's the there's the uh, you know the stretch factor if you like the correction factor when uh, the base is three. So let's do it with four. C and then with five would be with d. So these are all the correction factors now. What I think is interesting about this is what if we were to graph these things? So we go A and lim2, B and lim3, C and lim4, D and lim5. Now, this is making a pattern for sure, but what is the pattern? We maybe don't have enough information to try it out. So let's make a few more of these things. Let's make limb one. Okay, so let's make the limit when you do one. That one is zero. Okay, so one zero. Let's try with uh, zero point five. Uh, oh, you know what? I should really do it like this. Sorry. Okay, let's try it with zero point five. And then let's graph that point. Uh, sorry. Now, this may be difficult to uh, see just yet, but hopefully, you know, when you think about a function that has an x-intercept of one, is negative before that, and positive and slowly rising after that, you might begin to see what kind of shape we're getting here. Let's make one final point. Let's make the limit at uh, at one quarter, and that will hopefully finish the demonstration. Let's do it at 0.25. Okay, and then let's make a point lim and uh, that value that we just created. Uh, sorry. Okay, um, the the sequence that we're getting here is a perfect match for the natural logarithm function. So the natural logarithm is the correction factor that we need. Okay? And this comes from the fact that this is a really interesting definition of the natural logarithm is right here. The limit as your number to the power of 0 take away 1 over uh, h as h approaches 0 that's equal to ln b. So let's write that down. I don't think if we does it actually say that somewhere. Let's write that down just so you can write it over here. Okay, so we're going to write uh, limit as h approaches 0, okay, of that fraction that we just did. So b to the power of h minus 1 divided by h. That limit simplifies to ln b, okay, and that's really. Uh, it, that really is the point of what we're what we're looking at here in terms of like this correction factor. Where does it come from, and what is it equal to? Okay, so when you ever, whenever you're taking the derivative of an exponential, you're going to get the exponential again, and then you're going to get the natural logarithm of the base. Remember, this is just a constant because the base is a constant. So that's why we got 0 0.69 when we were working with two, because ln two is 0 0.69. And that's why you don't get a correction factor when you're working with e, sorry, uh, 
course, it thinks E is that number I just generated. EXP is how you do the E uh, function. When you do the ln of E, right, you get 1, because the correction factor is just a 1 when you're working with E. You don't, you don't need it, right? That's why you don't need a correction factor in the, in the, the, uh, when it's E to the X, OK? So ln 2 is your correction factor. Oh, well, let's write it down, 0 0.693. This is the constant that we were trying to figure out in the investigation. So this allows us to come to this really important conclusion. The derivative divided by the original function, which is the correction factor, is ln b. And therefore, the derivative of any exponential with any base is equal to the exponential again and 10 times the natural logarithm of the base. Let's demonstrate that quickly with 3 to the x and then its derivative, and you can see what does it do to create a derivative. It repeats 3 to the x, and then it adds this correction factor times ln 3. What if we change it to 5 to the x? Well, now it's 5 to the x ln 5, right? And so that's how you take the derivative of a exponential. So again, let's do a little bit of practice here. So to take the derivative of... Um, 5 to the x, I mean, we just did that one on the computer. y prime would be equal to 5 to the x, repeated, and then the natural logarithm of 5, right? And that would be your derivative, OK? Uh, sorry, is it going to be a little out of order just because kind of printing kind of strange on me here? OK, sorry, I just make it a bit easier to do this way. OK, let's do, uh, I'll do b next, uh, right? So y prime would be equal to, OK, I repeat what it says. It's the same function that they gave me. So pi to the power of x. And then I multiply by the natural logarithm of the base. Remember, pi is not a variable. It's a constant. So you just treat it like it was any other number. What if that number said 6? What would you do? You'd go 6 to the x, natural logarithm of 6. So you do the same thing with pi. OK, uh, this one, c. Let's try this one again. You repeat, you repeat the function exactly as it looks like, and then you do uh, the uh, natural logarithm of the base, right? Same as, the, same as the previous one. D is a little bit different because it has a constant. So you go 3. So you just bring the 3 to the front and just don't forget about it. And then you have everything else works the way you would think, right? So you have a 5 to the x ln 5, and you're just multiplying by 3. Now this last one, uh, you know, is a quotient rule. So maybe let's just take it aside. Um, so for a quotient rule, we have a numerator function is 4 to the power of x. Therefore, the numerator prime is 4 to the x ln 4. Oops. OK. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> OK, then we have a denominator function, which is just x, and the denominator function derivative is therefore just 1. OK, we know the derivative of any uh, nx over dx is given by the denominator. Let's make a fraction first. OK, the bottom is the denominator function squared. The top function is the denominator first times the derivative of the numerator, subtract the derivative of the denominator times the numerator, right? So just going back to our quotient rule from before. And all we're really doing here is just filling in the blanks with, or filling in each part with what it says above. So it says the denominator function first. So trying to copy paste to save time, but you be the judge if that actually helped. OK, denominator function is x. The numerator prime is 4 to the power of x times natural logarithm of 4. OK, then we have subtract. The denominator prime is 1, so I'm not going to bother writing it down. And you have 4 to the x on the top. On the bottom, you have the denominator function, which is x, and it has to be squared. So again, as usual when you're doing these functions, F. Sorry, just to clean this up a bit. Okay, so the f prime 
uh, we get this and this and so on. Okay, so that's all fine. And then what we're going to do here is we get uh, so f prime x is equal to. So we have let's factor out the four to the x. Okay, then what would we be left with? X times ln four. Okay, subtract one. And then on the bottom we have x squared. Okay, so that's what you would that's what when you factor it that's what you would have left. Okay, and that would be the derivative for that one uh, e. Again, let's just take a second to check four to the x, g to g over x, and then derivative h, and then let's factor h prime. We get four to the x as a common factor, x ln four minus one. It's the same thing that we said, x ln four minus one, and all of it divided by x squared. Okay. So uh, so, so next we're trying to find the derivative. Um, a couple of and a couple of logarithm rules. Okay, so let's find the derivative for um, this next one. So this one is a chain rule. Um, remember, the derivative y prime is equal to exactly what you see: seven to the three x times ln seven, and then you multiply by the derivative of the top. Right? You do the chain rule. So let's just just clarify. So so repeat the function, right? Just like the chain rule says, with the same argument add the correction factor and, you know so like take the part of the derivative is the correction factor so include the correction factor and the correction factor is always the same it's just ln b whatever b is and then you're going to take the derivative so chain rule to take the derivative of the argument the argument remember in this case is 3x it is like what what goes into what is being subbed into the function 7 to the power of x what is being subbed in is 3x okay so in general let's just make a general rule for that one you're going to have b to the power of g of x so you do the the function up there as you know as usual you're going to repeat it then you're going to multiply by the correction factor and then you're going to take the derivative of the uh the argument okay so let's try this one here root 3 x to the power of one half. Really good question. Okay. Let's try this one. So we have root three to the power of x to the power of two. Okay. Now right off the bat here, I would suggest a good thing to remember is that root three is equal to three to the power of zero point five, right? That's the that's what radicals uh, mean right so what if we had what if we change the question to look like this Oops. right and now it becomes you know fairly straightforward you take the derivative what do you do you take the function 3 to the power of 0 0.5 x squared okay you repeat it you multiply by the logarithm of the base and then you multiply by the derivative of the top the derivative of the top is x, right? Because you know, the two comes down, cancels out the 0.5, and then you get x. Okay, this is not the only way to do this. You could have done it just keeping the root where it was. Let's quickly show what that would look like. So, root three, oops, to the power of x squared. Okay, then we take y prime. So, what would what what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to copy the exponential out again, exactly as it was. Then we're going to do natural logarithm of the base. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the argument, which is a 2x. Now, a good question to ask here is, are, is this and this actually the same? Am I allowed to do this? Let's draw it. And then I want to. I'm going to leave this question with you to to explain to me why these two are the same because they really don't look the same, do they? Okay. And sorry, this says ln b. It should say ln three. Okay. So let's draw the first one. So three to the power of 0 0.5 x squared times ln three times x. Okay. So that's what that's what the first one we did. The second one we did was square root three to the power of x squared times ln of square root 3 times uh, 2x. Indeed, 
they are the exact same. Okay. I would like an explanation. Why are they the same? How come this and this are the same? Both of them are right, by the way. You'd get marks regardless of which one you chose. But I would like it, someone to explain to me how these two are the same. Okay. Uh, so I'll post that one. I'll, leave, I'll just leave it as an activity on the front page. Okay, next one. It says uh, y is equal to 3 to the power of x squared plus 2x. Okay, so take the derivative. y prime is equal to. Copy out the exponent exactly as you see it, just like you would have for any other chain rule. Multiply by the correction factor, then take the derivative of the top. Okay, and that's what you should, that's what you should end up with. And again, you just kind of get the hang of this. So they're all the same once you see how to do them. Here we go. Y prime would be copy it out exactly as it is. Okay. Then multiply by the correction factor. Okay. Then multiply by the derivative of the top. Now the derivative of the top again looks difficult, looks complicated. It's not. E is a constant. The derivative of E is zero. 3x is a linear. The derivative of that is just a 3. Okay. Uh, this one here. Sorry, this one does some text work and then it's some laws. Okay, so uh, let me... Um, I'm going to finish these two and then I want to talk about these law laws a little bit and then we'll close it down for today. Okay, so let's finish this next one. So the derivative here. 5 to the power of 2x plus 3x squared plus 1. Okay, let's take the derivative. y prime would be... Okay, the first one is an exponential. We have to do our exponential stuff to that. The second one is not an exponential, and the third one is just a constant, right? So remember, just because we're in the exponentials unit doesn't mean everything's an exponential. This is still a polynomial, right? Because x is not in the exponent. X is in x is the base. Here, x is in the exponent. That's an exponential, right? This part is exponential, and that's why it has the more complicated derivative, right? Where you have to use this rule. But this part here, just a polynomial. So don't, you know, don't do, don't unlearn what you already know about polynomials. That's easy. Just take the derivative the same way you always would. Okay, this last one is a little bit trickier because it's a product rule. Let's make this onto a new page. So product rule. Product rule says if f of x is equal to g times h, then then f prime is equal to g prime h plus h prime g. Okay, so our job then is to decide what's g. So let's make g e to the power of 3x. h is going to be 2 to the power of x squared plus 1. Okay, which makes g prime. Now remember, g when you're working with the, the, the base e, you have a bit of an easier time. Let's do it the long way and then we'll, we'll shorten it up. So you repeat the function exactly as it is, you do the correction factor, and then you multiply by the, um, the uh, derivative of the top. Now, of course, we know that ln e is equal to 1, and therefore can be ignored. So g prime is just e to the 3x times 3. You don't need the ln e because th th you don't need a correction factor with e. That's the whole advantage to working with e in the first place. For h of x, for h prime of x, excuse me, we are going to copy the function out again, 2 to the power of x squared plus 1. Okay, and then we're going to multiply by the correction factor. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the top, which is a 2x. Okay? Sorry, I, I wrote an x here. I'm looking at this like something doesn't make sense about what I have here. So that's a 2. That 2 isn't there. Okay, so there's our derivative for uh, the h function, and there's our derivative for the g function. So really all we got to do here is just put all the parts together. So again, the pattern I'm going to use is this pattern up here for the product rule. So let's go g prime, which is th uh, e to the power of 3x times 3. Then I'm supposed to do h, which is 2 to the power of x squared plus 1. Okay, then I add h prime is 2 to the power of x squared plus 1 times ln 2 times 2x. 
And finally, I'm, my last part of the pattern is g of x, which is e to the power of 3 to the x. Okay. Now again, if you look closely here, there's always going to be an e to the, the you know, like every exponential is going to repeat on both sides since they are their own derivative. So this appears twice. Oh, sorry, that's an awful color to choose. How about red? And this, and it appears again there. Okay, so let's just take those common factors to the front. e to the 3x can come to the front. 2 to the power of x squared plus 1 can come to the front. And then we just look for what's left. We have a 3 on that side, and we have a ln 2 times 2x on that side. Okay, and that's what our final uh, f, uh, f prime of x would be equal to. Okay, again, it, I think it's really helpful to use GeoGebra when you're doing these ones, so let's just show how you would do this. So uh, let's make a new one. So e to the power of 3x is going to be my first function. Uh, 2 to the power of x squared plus 1 is going to be my second function. And I'm going to make a new function that's f times g. Okay, And that's the function that it is we're looking at uh, taking the derivative. So I take derivative of h. It produces that. I want to see it factored so I can check my answer. And I factor it, and it does. Oh, actually, GeoGebra is. Did I make a mistake here? Let me pause and think about this for a second. Okay, no, I didn't. I didn't make a mistake. What what they're doing? I think. Okay, well, hold on. Let's just let's just compare them side by side. I'll pause. Okay, so they just to clarify what they did, and I don't know. I don't actually think their answer is better than than ours here. But just to clarify, let's just track the parts with me, right? E to the three x is there. Two to the x squared plus one is there, and then the uh, the three right is also here I have it in black then you look at the other side they have a lawn 2 right we have a lawn 2 an e to the 3x they have an e to the 3x now we have a 2x and they just have a regular x because they've taken the 2 and they've put it into this power and that's what's made it 2 to the x squared plus 2 instead of 2 to the x squared plus 1 I, I think what they did obviously what the, what it did is fine but it's, I, I think actually it's better the way we have it. Uh, but anyway, it, it doesn't matter. I guess you can't really, I was going to say this would be a good way to check your work, but you, you can still check it, but yeah, yeah, maybe it's more trouble than it's worth at that point. Um, let me look at what we have left to do here. So it's asking to do just this textbook work. Um, I think... I really would like you to try these three. These are three different definitions of E, which are fascinating. I mean, just pick a number in your calculator, like 1,000. Plug in 1,000 into this and see what you get. You know, plug in a number really close to zero, plug into that, see what you get. Or just try this one. You know, do this one up to 10 and see what you get, right? So it's all these different definitions of where E comes from. It comes from a whole bunch of these different series. So it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing where, where it's sort of, uh, so you can see here, it's, it's like subbing in some values and, and checking them, but I'd like you to try that on your own. Now, uh, just to remind you a couple of things with logarithm rules, and they're the same things with the natural logarithm, you are allowed to do the following. If you have a product inside your logarithm, you can separate the logarithm into addition. If you have division inside your logarithm, you can separate the logarithm into two logarithms of subtraction. Finally, if you have an exponent inside your logarithm, you may bring it to the front. Okay, so for example, if I do ln, you know, of, of 5 to the power of 4, so let's say, um, how could I do this? Okay, so let's do ln of x squared. That's a bad example. x cubed. Okay. Now what my argument here is, I should be able to bring that 3 
to the front of the equation, right? And it should be the same. Okay, and if you look here, it is the same. Now, it isn't the same for squared, because when I do squared, right, the domain of the function changes, because, oops, oh, I did not mean to do that. Sorry, you're probably not seeing what I'm seeing anyway. Uh, okay, sorry. So let's, let me just go back and repeat that for a second. So if I do ln of x cubed, okay, and then I do 3 ln x, they are the exact same function because the 3 can be brought down to the front. Now, when I do with x squared, it doesn't actually quite work the same way because, yes, they are the same on one side, but x squared actually makes it exist on the other side, right? Because the inner function now turns out to be always positive. So if, the, if you know x squared is always positive except when it's zero, and when it's zero our function's still undefined, you can see the asymptote. But you are allowed to bring the number from uh, the top and bring it down to the front. Okay? You are allowed to do that. That's what this rule says. Now please understand these rules do not imply that addition inside the lawn has anything to do with multiplication outside the lawn. This is 100% wrong. Do not do it. Addition inside the lawn is a very bad sign. It probably means there's something else you need to do in the question because when you see this, it usually means something has gone wrong. Okay? Do not take addition inside and turn it into multiplication outside. That does not work. Multiplication inside can become addition outside. That's the only way it works. Okay? It's easy to make errors in this. A lot of people didn't get this right in advanced functions. And so make the correction now. Right? Commit to understanding this the right way. I can go from the left to the right or the right to the left, but I cannot change the operation inside the function to outside the function. That, that doesn't work. Okay? So all those rules you had before are still true. Again, they only work if a, b, x, and y are greater than zero. And really, uh, you know, a, uh, a and b shouldn't be one either. So you know what I was trying to show before? Really what I should do here is I should add a restriction. So let's just say uh, function uh, from 0 to 1,000. And then, you know, you don't get the other side, right? Which is what I, sh I should have done because, you know, you're only supposed to put... Any anyway, it, um, it doesn't really make a difference, but just to explain. It, it works as long as the things that are going into it are positive, okay? So be careful. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's leave it at that. So I'm going to leave you with this question of the one back up here. Why are these two the same? Again, try the homework today. Post any questions, and uh, good luck on this material.